sport of skin diving has been increasing by leaps and bounds. And the problems of law enforcement agencies have been increasing right along with it. This boatman was part of an organized plot to steal outboard motors. He was loosening the clamps of an expensive motor and dropping it in the water. If discovered, he'd say it was an accident. His accomplice was an underwater swimmer. And his job was to recover the motor. If questioned, he would say that he found it while skin diving. If not questioned, he had an outboard motor. This type of crime brought me 3,000 miles across the country from Marineland, California, to Silver Springs, Florida. The Florida Highway Patrol was as progressive as the criminals. They decided to organize an underwater patrol and they asked me to train their best swimmers to become proficient skin divers. I started with two fine-looking officers, Hal Davis and Tom Edwards. Both turned out to be good skin divers. But I didn't know how soon they'd have to prove it. A few days later, it happened again. This time, a New York businessman, James Aladdin, and his daughter, Judy, were the victims of an underwater crime. While they were peacefully fishing, an unidentified skin diver started swimming up toward the Aladdin cruiser. except that you came from the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, I misjudged a little bit. I'm out of air. Well, come on aboard. Oh, thank you. My name's James Alat. I'm Don Martin. Welcome aboard, Mr. Martin. This is my daughter, Judy. How do you do? Miss Aladdin, how is the fishing? It's a fake. I've read all the books and obeyed all the rules. Fish don't read the same books. How about you, sir? Oh, with me, it's just a matter of who cares, just so as I get a minute to relax. Where are you bound for, Mr. Martin? Thought I'd try a little spear fishing? Is that a spear gun? Yes, and it has an explosive head. A close range, it could kill an alligator. Or a man, if he doesn't do exactly as he's told. Well, I, I, I can promise you this man isn't going to argue. You're in the driver's seat, mister. What's next? Put all your valuables in this bag. Hurry. Everything. If you miss out anything, you'll be risking a trip to the undertaker. Now hand it over. Now you start your engine. I'll tell you where to go. The next lesson was about hand-to-hand -hand combat. How to disarm an opponent with a knife underwater. My two students lived up to everything that I thought about them. Soon they'd become the nucleus of an underwater force that would make Florida's 1,349 miles of coastline safe from illegal underwater activity. Judy and her father had been tied up. They'd also been gagged. 
Mr. Aladdin had difficulty in breathing. The criminal's next step was to go below with a tow line, swim down, way down to the bottom, and find a log that he could tie the line to. His purpose was to stop the boat from drifting. This would delay the discovery of his act. Trouble clearing your nose? Okay. Had a little throw up my ears. Just threw that up. A little on it like that? Well, yeah, what next? Uh, I gotta find some deeper water for you fellas. See how you react to uh, nitrogen narcosis. What's that? It's also called, uh, rapture of the deep. It's what happens to a diver when he stays down too long in deep water. He gets kind of giddy. He's liable to do anything. The thing to do then, of course, is to go up right away. Hey, Tom! Now what? The commissioner's in the car. He wants to see you right away. Okay. We were driven to the scene of the crime. Mr. Aladdin was rushed to a hospital before we got there, suffering from asthma. The gag almost suffocated him. Ms. Aladdin was there to answer our questions. This is where the cruiser was anchored when the man came aboard. Where was it when he left it? Jacob's Inlet, about a mile up that way. Did you notice the tanks in his back? Yes. How many were there? Two. Were they uh, large ones or were they uh, small? They are about that size. You're sure now? It's very important. Yes, I'm sure. And you said he had a spear gun. Was the point a sharp one or was it a blunt one? It was, it was sharp. I think we got to go up to Jacob's Inlet. Okay. Hal, you take Miss Aladdin back to the hospital. All right, Tom. There's no such thing as a blunt spear. I just wanted to test Miss Aladdin's power of observation before exploring the lake bottom around Jacob's Inlet. We were looking for underwater clues. We had no idea just what they would be. There are no fingerprints underwater, but uh, perhaps we might run into a piece of lost equipment or, or something. We wanted to know about the entrance and the exit of the robber. where we thought he had stood on the bottom. Swimming up and down in a regular pattern, covering every inch of the bottom, we reached the place where he had tied the line to prevent his victim's boat from drifting away. Now we knew the place of his last underwater activity. It was logical to assume that he would leave the lake at the nearest possible point. We swam in that direction. out of the water in a sheltered cove and soon learned that our hunch was correct.
Looks like there's been a boat moored here. Yeah, it sure does. Hey, look at this. What's that? That's talcum powder. It's what we used to put our wetsuits on, remember? Yeah, I see what you mean. You better check this area. We had found the spot of the criminal's exit. Now we had to find the criminal himself. There is a skin diver's lifeline. He had to get it somewhere. Maybe I could find the source of the holdup man's supply. There was only one place in the county where a skin diver could refill his empty tanks. You know where Waco is? Right up the end of the walkway there. Thank you, boy. And the place belonged to a little old man. Hi. You the gentleman I call Waco? I am. Uh, you keep a record of the customers that you rent these diving lungs of yours to? I sure do, you skin diver. Yeah. You do me a favor? Name it. Give me the uh, descriptions and names of these customers. Hey, you got a record book? Sonny, I don't keep a record book. That's old-fashioned. I keep my records up here where I don't lose them. Have a seat. You got a pencil and paper? No, I don't think I have. Well, there's one there by the telephone, a notebook and a pencil. This one all right? That's all right. Now, first is Chuck Phillips. He's 47 years old. Got two young'uns, a girl, Lebanese. How tall you say he is? He's about 6'2". Uh, he rents the old wink he plays. Four, How much would you say that he weighs? Well, I'd say that he weighs about 180. His wife's ailing. She's been ailing ever since he's been down here this season. I just came from the hospital. Mr. Aladdin's going to be all right. Good. How'd you make out? Well, I have a detailed description of Waco's 19 customers. The best that the Aladdin's could do was he's around 180 pounds, about six foot tall, around 40 years old, and he might have a mustache. I have a mustache, huh? Let's see. Now, here's one. Now, he's too young. Now, this sounds like the character Herb Warren. He's a mechanic in Cy Langley's garage. Well, I'll do some checking on him. I'll drop you off at the motel. You pick up Miss Aladdin. Meet me at Cy Langley's garage in about an hour. Okay. And she'll have to give me a positive identification. Or I can't take him in. all day? It seems like I'm on a job all the time. For instance, were you here at 10.30 this morning? No. Wait till the quarter to the one last night. Felt ought to have a couple extra hours of sleep. You do much skin diving? A little. Do any this morning? Not this morning. Why? Is there anyone that can back up your story about being asleep this morning at home? Guess not. I don't like to have people around while I'm sleeping. Except Candy. Candy? Candy's my cat. Mr. Ladd, have you ever seen this man before? Well? I don't know. Well, is there anything about him you recognize? Well, I have to be honest, Mr. Edwards. There's something about this gentleman that's familiar, but... I can't be sure that he's the man who robbed us. A robber? <laughs> well, I like that. I've been accused of robbing my customers. But no one else. We're just making a routine check, Mr. Warren. Sorry to have bothered you. That's all right, sir. Anytime. 
It wasn't a positive identification, so later in the day, Tom and I paid another visit to Waco's boathouse. Hi, Waco. You want to take a look at Mr. Warren's tank? Sure. The here, it's a double. Okay. What you doing, son? We're going to give Mr. Warren a little surprise. This is tracing liquid. What's that? You can't see it in daylight, but it'll stick out like a sore thumb. Or you put that black light on it. Black light? <laughs> what are you fellas giving me? Show them, Tom. Well, what do you know? Anything that this tank touches will glow as bright as this tank. That way we can keep track of Mr. Warren. Excuse me, what do they think of next? Waco, if Mr. Warren comes in to get his tank, act just like nothing ever happened. And phone me. Can depend on me, son. Can depend on me. You coming, Mike? Yeah. How are you? Thank you, Waco. Anytime. <laughs> Is this Tom Edwards? That's right. Listen, this is Waco. You, you know that feller Warren we were talking about? Well, he come by and took his tank, put it in a boat, and took off. Which way did he go? He went towards Jacob's Inlet. Thanks a lot, Waco. Anytime. head start, but Tom was an excellent swimmer.
caught up with Tom but decided to stay in the background. I kept an eye on him, but I was reasonably sure that he could do the job by himself. taught him. The knife attack didn't surprise him. He used a judo hold. His opponent was helpless. I gave him a hand in bringing him to the surface for questioning. fella scared me. Is that why you're in such a hurry to get away? Well, sure. I thought you were a couple of robbers. It's a funny thing. We thought the same about you. What was that you threw away underwater, Mr. Warren? I don't remember throwing anything away. Say, what is all of this? I come out here for some peaceful skin diving. A peaceful man, you put up a pretty good fight. Well, you know how it is. Man gets panicky. I come up out of the water. You two bearing down on me. Been a lot of robberies here lately. Yeah, we know. Galloway, he's good. Get in. One eighty six, Ocala, okay. A Tolden robber reported to Anderson's cottage near Jacob's Inlet. We're on our way over right now. One eighty six, clear. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mike. Whoever pulled this job must have come out of the water. Take a look. You find anything yet, Mike? Uh, not yet. Hey, what's he doing? That tank you were wearing is coated with a tracing liquid that only shows up under ultraviolet ray light. If there's any sign of that liquid on these premises, you're in, Mr. Warren. And I do mean in. There's one. Tom went after Warren. I signaled to the other patrolman to let Tom do it all by himself. I knew this was the way he wanted it. He did it like an expert. There's always the time when the student becomes the master. Today, the Florida Highway Patrol is the first in the country with an underwater force. I'm proud that I had something to do with it. Hi, I'm Lloyd Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today.